Asthma is a chronic lung disease that causes inflammation and narrowing of the bronchi and bronchioles in the lungs and consequently messes up our normal oxygenation. There are three key players that you should know to understand the pathophysiology of an asthma attack. Number one, the smooth muscle. Airway smooth muscle exists in the trachea and goes all the way down into the bronchioles and its function is to constrict and dilate to facilitate breathing. When a patient experiences an asthma attack, this smooth muscle is permanently constricted, causing the feeling of chest tightness and difficulty breathing. Our second key player is the mucosal lining that sits just below that smooth muscle in our lungs. During an asthma attack, the mucosa becomes very inflamed, which narrows the airway even more and decreases air flow, causing coughing, wheezing, and air trapping. Pay attention to the word air trapping for the NCLEX. A big sign of this is if a patient states that they feel like they can't fully exhale. And our third key player are the goblet cells that are found within this mucosal lining. Goblet cells produce mucus, which typically help trap irritants and bacteria when we breathe in and prevents them from further entering into our respiratory system. Now during an asthma attack, goblet cells create too much mucus, and I'm sure you can guess with excessive mucus, our coughing, wheezing, and air trapping is only going to get worse. Now with air trapping, gas exchange is compromised. Low amounts of oxygen are entering the blood, which means our patients will have a decreased oxygen saturation. And carbon dioxide has a hard time being exhaled, which means our patient will have a buildup of CO2, aka respiratory acidosis. Remember, carbon dioxide is an acid. There are several triggers that can lead to an asthma exacerbation, and as the nurse, it is important to know these so we can educate our patients on how to avoid them. I'm going to list a ton of possible triggers, but some of the most commonly tested on the NCLEX include pollen, cool and dry air, and exercise-induced asthma. Signs and symptoms of asthma exacerbation and attack can be broken down into early, active, and severe symptoms. And of course, we want to catch these signs and symptoms early so they don't lead to that severe attack. Common early signs and symptoms include shortness of breath, wheezing, becoming easily fatigued, sneezing, scratchy throat, and a decreased peak flow best. Now you're probably wondering what the heck is a decreased peak flow best, but do not worry, we will go over that in a little. Active signs include chest tightness, tachycardia, cough, wheezing, dyspnea, and an oxygen saturation of less than 90%. We may also see an increased respiratory rate because we are trying to facilitate a good solid inhale and exhale, but physically cannot. And then we have our severe signs of an asthma attack. The rescue inhaler is not working, the patient cannot speak, chest retractions are visible, and because the lack of oxygen, the patient has cyanosis around the lips and skin. Not only does the NCLEX love to test our knowledge on signs and symptoms, but they will want to know what you will do as a nurse in a critical situation. For a patient presenting with an acute asthma attack, our fast relief drugs are albuterol and ipratropium. We can then give long-acting beta-2 agonists and inhaled corticosteroids for control of symptoms. An NCLEX tip, we will always give a bronchodilator first so that we open the lungs as much as possible to allow those meds or oxygen to make its way through. In addition to medications, we place the patient in a high Fowler's position and continuously watch vital signs. For assessment, ask yourself, is there a decrease in wheezing? How is the patient's skin color? Are they able to talk to me better after those meds were given? Now let's go over peak flow best because that will be another nursing consideration to assess if our patient is responding to treatment. And this just might pop up on the NCLEX. A peak flow meter is a device that will show how controlled a patient's asthma is and if it's getting worse or better. When a patient uses a peak flow meter for the very first time, they need to establish what we call a personal best. To do this, over the course of two to three weeks, the patient will exhale into the device twice a day and the device measures how much air was exhaled out of the lungs. The highest reading in that two to three week span is their personal best. The personal best will now be the baseline to evaluate an asthma exacerbation or an impending attack. 
After we establish the personal best, we then see different color zones on the peak flow meter. The green zone is 80 to 100% of their personal best, and this is the zone that the patient should be in every day. It means air is moving well and they can do their usual activities and go to sleep without trouble. The yellow zone is 50 to 80% of their personal best, and this is their warning sign that the large airways are starting to narrow and we may need an inhaler or some type of treatment. And the red zone is less than 50% of their personal best, AKA there is severe narrowing of the large airways. This is a medical emergency and the patient should seek help right away. Now that's the basics of asthma and asthma attacks. These will be key points when studying for the NCLEX. Remember, the NCLEX focuses on signs and symptoms and what you as the nurse will do in a critical situation. Happy studying, friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more of these videos. Okay. Warning signs that an attack may ha- Oh, wow. Consequently, I cannot get that word. Consequently. Yeah. Oh, I, I ran out of breath. Did I even say that right? Ipratropium? 